Hey, what's up guys? MGH here. Welcome back to another FIFA 21 career mode video. Today, we are going to be talking about scheduling. The monthly scheduling, the weekly scheduling, and making sure that you are keeping your players happy, match sharp, and match fit. Thank you so much to the EA Game Changers Network for allowing me to play this early build of the game and release videos on it. And of course, this is not an up-to-date build. It is still a few weeks away from launch as I'm recording this. Um, but we're going to get straight into this now. So when you start up a new career mode, as I have with Arsenal here, the first thing you'll see is the three circles that I call them, the three circles. You've got match fitness, you've got match sharpness, and you've got morale. Three things that you need to keep green. You need to keep everything as high as you can to be as successful as you can. The best way to keep track of this is to keep looking at your squad. You don't even have to go into the squad management. You can see in the top right corner there, um, you've got the match sharpness, which is the gem, which is yellow at the moment, or the crystal, the, the diamond, whatever you want to call it. You've got player morale, which is the smiley face. In this case, um, all my players seem to be averagely happy because it's the start of the season. We haven't won anything, we haven't lost anything. But uh, the green little electric bolt there is, of course, their uh, fitness levels. So right now, we're, we're not doing a preseason tournament. We haven't played over the summer yet, so everyone is fully fit. Now, with match... Uh, fitness, the best way to keep that up is rest. And the, the match sharpness is training. So you need to balance those two out because if you're improving one, the other one comes down. So if you're training, you gain match sharpness, but you lose match fitness. If you lose games, you will obviously upset your players. They will lose morale. If you win games, they will go up. It's very simple, but you've got to try and keep those green. Now, if you don't understand why like why does that matter what you'll know straight away in fever 21 is when you look at your squad there are so many things going on on your screen and i'm going to go ahead and explain them all for you right now so the little um exclamation mark there is a warning that a player is playing out of p uh, position as i've said many times already apparently this was already in the game it just wasn't a visual thing you couldn't see the minus stats however it was actually affecting your players but now in fifa 20 21 you actually see it as someone with a bit of ocd and I, I hate the mess it makes when there's warnings all over the place you want to make sure you fix this up but that is not something you can do with training and things like that when a player is out of position you can press square and then change their position on the pitch you can choose their role but of course that is down to player position training which is in the development plans i've already made a video about development plans you can go ahead and check that out but we're not talking about that one today what we want to talk about is the uh, the two icons next to their shirt so you've got the face you've got the gem and then obviously underneath you've got the fitness so what you want to do is make sure all of those are green because if you don't, you're going to be seeing minus ratings. So at the moment, because we haven't played any games, Saka has a minus 19 purely because he's out of position. If I swap these guys around, you'll see that Saka's only a minus 10 now because he can play on that left side of the pitch, but he's still not a left back. If I drag him up here, convert him to a left mid, it will disappear. So what you want to do, let's uh, let's show you guys training. So with the scheduling, what you can do is decide how many times you're going to train in a week, how many times you're going to rest, whether or not you want a recovery day after a match and things like that. So you can go into the weekly schedule here and you can decide what you want to do. This is another great way to keep track of how things are looking. You get the, the circles on the right with the progress. So you can see right now it's obviously very yellow. We haven't done anything. You can see in the middle, the training days. Um, you can go to training, pressing square there. So this is how you're going to increase sharpness and lose fitness. I've already done this training drill, so we would be back in a couple of days time. So training takes off 10 of the fitness levels and depending on the results of your training drills. So of course, if you've played these training drills, you will then get whatever you got and then you will keep getting what you got. So if you finish the inside the zone dribbling one and you got an A, if you then keep simulating this one, you will get an A every time. Uh, however, every week they change unless you yourself go in and change the drills. But uh, ideally, you want to be getting Bs and As. You will gain plus 6, plus 8 match sharpness, which is what you want to see. Getting a D is not good because you lose the 10 fitness, but you only gain plus 2 sharpness. I would say as a rule of thumb at the moment, at least with, with FIFA 21 and how it feels in this build, you want to be losing that 10 fitness for at least a plus 6 or a plus 8 in sharpness. Otherwise, you can run into issues where match sharpness is just not 
at the level you need. If you don't have a good match sharpness, your players, well, then they're not sharp. They're not ready for the game and they lose rating. Of course, you can still play well. You can still have a good game and still win games with your players being a little bit in the red. But you want the best chance possible to be successful, right? You want your players to be at their natural rating or, if anything, bonus rating. And that would be if all of these circles are green. If you can get all of these circles green, my God, it makes such a difference. I had Aubameyang playing at a 95 rating. It's disgusting. He's quicker. He's better at shooting, passing everything. He became a god striker. Um, and I almost feel like, you know, especially in Road to Glories where maybe you don't have much money to sign better players. As long as you are good at balancing out these three circles, if you can keep the fitness, the sharpness, and the morale in the green, your players will play like new signings all the time. As they improve their rating, they're still gaining plus three, plus four, plus five, because you've got three green circles. I hate referring it to it as the circles, but that is literally what it is. So what you can do is go to the calendar here. You can change view between these, by the way, so you can actually do the schedule rules here. But I like to go into the calendar here so you get the full month. And what you want to do is press triangle or Y, and you want to select one of these three things here. So before a match, typically I go with a rest day. So if you do training before a match, guess what? They're not going to be fully fit for the game. You want a rest day before the match, even though in real life, I believe most teams do a training session before the game day sometimes even on the morning of game day to get the players ready and go through some final things that they want to work on during the match. But uh, in career mode, I have found a rest day is really important before the match. And after the match, ideally you want to go with a recovery day. You can add a rest day, you can add a training day, but recovery seems to boost their recovery. They don't really gain too much sharpness, but they do lose less of their uh, match fitness, which is what you want. Now, in terms of the weekly plan, this is a tricky one because I, I could test this as many times as I want. Sometimes it seems to be good. Sometimes it seems to be bad. I have found the best one is intermittent training. Basically, you don't want to train too much. It is that simple. If you train too much, your players are just always tired and that makes things really, really difficult. The only other one that I used was only training. Now, what I tended to do with only training was when there was a massive gap between games. I found that, let's say, there's an international break during a week. Um, let's say you had two weeks between each Premier League match. If you go to only training, you'll notice that their match sharpness has taken a massive boost before that next game. And their match fitness might be a little bit lower than usual, but it's more than enough. And it's worth the extra you get in the sharpness. I think, for me, sharpness is the most important one. It seems to be the hardest one to keep balanced. Um, well, I guess morale is quite easy as long as you do the press conferences that they really boost players' morale. But if you don't have good sharpness, it's really difficult. At least with fitness, you know, you can just rotate the players. But then you get another problem because rotated players that haven't played much have bad sharpness. So there is a way to fix that. I will explain that in a moment. Um, but basically what I've noticed is if you do intermittent training during busy times, so what that will do is it will put a training every other day. Uh, you do not ever want to do only rest. Don't do that because then you have no match sharpness. But look at that. Can you imagine doing that? You literally have rest day every single day. You're basically giving your players permanent holiday. I'd actually be tempted to give this a go um, as like a challenge one year. Just do a season of only rest and see how the team gets on. But um, yeah, what I do is I do intermittent training when it's busy. And then I go to only training when it's pretty quiet as long as you have the rest day as well after the match that seems to work fine so again as i mentioned in the development plan i love that in this year's career mode you're constantly having to watch things you're constantly having to go back in change things around to make sure everything works well it's the same with the calendar you need to be coming into this every few weeks just to make sure you're getting the most out of all these days that you have but how do you fix the match sharpness on your um, reserve players that you're not using. Let me go ahead and give you a brief explanation for that. So we've done training. What we want to do is advance to the next day, which is going to be training again. So what happens is they fill up this randomly. They go ahead and give you three random drills and they fill it with players they think that maybe is, uh, is worthwhile training. Now, every now and again, maybe you get a few reserve players, but not all the time. So what I would recommend is you create a team sheet with a mix of first team players that you really want to keep training, keep getting match sharpness and things like that, but also throw in a few um, reserve players. So I would create a new team sheet 
Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it like that, <laughs> just because why not? Then what I would do is take a few key players. So Aubameyang, definitely want him to be in this. Let's go ahead and throw in Nketiah because I want him to still be match sharp. I'm planning on rotating him into the team. Let's take out Torreira and throw in... Let's go with El Elneny. Why not? Um, you kind of get the, the drift here. You just want to throw in some players that maybe you're planning on using as rotation players. So we've just added three there. You want to go ahead and select them. And then what you want to do is reset players. So that will then go ahead and change the players that the computer put into the training. So there you can see Mari's been put in there. We've still got Aubameyang and most importantly, Nketiah came in as well. And then you want to simulate it. You want to make a team sheet that reflects the players that you want to be in this training week in, week out, and then you can quickly select them. The other way to do this, of course, if we can get into another training drill, let's just go into the calendar here. What you want to do is just manually bring in those players. The only downside to that is it can be a little bit slow. So it's training day. We're going to go ahead and throw in some different players. And then you can go ahead and choose the players you want. Or you can select bench players by pressing R1 or reserve players by pressing R1. You can actually toggle between them so you get a list of all the players there. But of course, before you put the players in, you kind of want to choose the right drill. So you want to go ahead and change that first, ideally. And this brings me on to the next new thing. They have kind of put these into categories of heavy, light, and regular. I think that's that's the only three you get. Is there any others here? I don't think so. So based off the um, the type of training you're doing, whether it's heavy, whether it's light, whether it's regular, it will determine how much fitness they'll lose and how much sharpness they will gain. And of course, it's affected by how well you do the training drill. So yeah, you want to make sure you're choosing the right ones, whether it's dribbling, defending, passing, shooting, or set pieces. Um, ideally, I would recommend you go with heavy. I feel like with heavy, you also get five players you can put in. Yes, you lose a, a, quite a lot of match fitness, but you do gain so much sharpness. And as I said, that seems to be the most important one of the three circles. You want to make sure that match sharpness is up. I think that's pretty much it. I don't think I need to explain it too much. I mean, basically, if I was to round up this video, make sure you get three green circles there on the main screen. Make sure sharpness is the one that's at the very top. You want to make sure your players are sharp. They get a nice boost in stats. And it seems like fitness and morale are quite easy to get up just resting them you know you don't need to worry about it too much but when you do training just make sure you do the right drills select the right players make a team sheet if that makes it quicker for you and um yeah just make sure that you're keeping the schedule up to date as you're going around so always go into your weekly schedule you want to press r1 go to the calendar press triangle and make sure you're changing these as well based off how many games you got but thank you so much for watching hopefully you've learned something today again and hopefully you're enjoying these fifa 21 videos again thank you to ea i really appreciate this this is amazing it's a it's a sad thing that we can't have an in-person capture event this year, but being able to play it from home is really good. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.